a new report on trust in the era of digital transformation. I'm Tanya Hall for ZDNet and Tech Republic, and joining me is Dr. David Bursoff, Head of Global Thought Leadership Research at Edelman Intelligence. Welcome, Dr. Bursoff. Thank you. So give us a quick summary of who Edelman Intelligence is. Sure, so Edelman Intelligence is the research and insights arm of Edelman, the, the PR communications consultancy company. We do the data collection, we do the research that underpins and informs the strategies that we develop for our clients. Your company just released the 2019 Edelman Trust Barometer Report. Let's start with the foundation. What is the goal of this type of research? Well, we see that trust is sort of a foundational concept that underpins every relationship, every important relationship, whether it be a personal relationship, the relationship with a specific organization, or a relationship with the institutions in society. And what we found is that by tracking and measuring trust over time in various markets, in various institutions, it gives us some really good insight into sort of the, the health and well-being of society and how people in those societies and in those markets are feeling about how they're being led, feeling about how comfortable they are having sort of um, given over responsibility for things that are really important in their lives, whether it be knowledge or education or government or defense or security to these institutions in society and whether they're feeling good about that today or not so good about that today. What is the scope of the survey? How many respondents and from what kind of markets? Yeah, so we are a global study, 27 markets around the world. Uh, we have about 1,150 people per market, uh, general population. Uh, it is an online study. So in markets that are less developed, the sample is going to skew a little richer, a little more rural than the population as a whole. But we do have a representative population of the people who are online in those countries. You have a section stating that fears of job loss remain high. Describe what you found there in, in the world technology is playing in that. Sure. So, um, you know, at the end of the day, how you feel about society, how you feel about your future, how optimistic you are, depends or is built on a foundation of how secure you feel in terms of your financials, your family, your job, your ability to provide for the people you care about. Uh, and so concerns about job loss are, are sort of an epicenter of trust and fear and concern. There's a lot of emotionality that goes around that. Uh, and so it's really important to measure and gauge. And, and what we found is that people, uh, over 50% of people who are employed are worried about losing their job at some point in the future to things like um, globalization, immigration, but also technology and automation. Uh, and that uh, a lot of the, the populist sentiment and movement that we saw in this country starting a couple of years ago, the epicenter of that was, was immigration and globalization. But what we're seeing now is that concerns about robots and automation are becoming comparable to concerns about globalization and immigration when people are thinking about their job, their future, uh, and what their prospects are. Another area highlighted by the study is the trust in news and information. What did you find as a result related to the news and information transmitted through social media channels? Yeah, so um, it's a very interesting story, actually. So um, you may remember back to uh, Marshall McLuhan, who who came up with this idea that the medium is the message. And that was the notion, it was built around TV, that TV was so visceral, so visual, that any information you put out through TV was gonna be more believable than say what you saw in print because of that immediacy, because of that saliency. What we're sort of seeing now is kind of a second version of that, uh, but it's focused on, on social media. And the idea is that social media is viewed with a certain degree of suspect. There's a certain cynicism around it. And so what we're finding is that information delivered through social media is, is in some way 
fighting a bit of an uphill battle because there's this sense in which that channel is, is viewed as being somewhat compromised, is be, viewed as, as being somewhat fraught. And so even though people use social media as one of the primary ways of getting news and information, they also have a little bit of cynicism about the information that comes across social media. And we think part of the reason is that people, they, are, they haven't learned what the credibility markers are for information that comes through social media. So in the old days, you know, if it showed up on your doorstep in the evening or in the morning, you, just, you could take it as gospel. If you saw it on the evening news, 6.30 every evening, you didn't have to worry about it. When something comes across your social media, there isn't anything, that, there isn't any cut and dried way necessarily of determining that this is credible, this is believable, this is real, this is a person, this is not misinformation or fake information. And so as people are trying to figure things out, as people are trying to learn how to navigate the new information ecosystem, um, at this point, social media is, is being seen in somewhat of a less advantaged situation compared to some other forms of media because you can sort of never be sure of, of where that information came from and how many hands it went through and, and was it a source that, that you would have trusted if you had sort of been interacting with them directly. So based on your research, what advice would you offer to technology executives as they try to strengthen the trust throughout their organizations in 2019? Sure. So, you know, there's a few bits of information uh, or a few bits of advice. Um, one is that, that tech companies, and this is not just with their employees, but this is in general, they tend to paint a very positive, glamorous, futuristic p picture of technology. Technology is this, is this wonderful thing that bears all this fruit that makes life easier and faster and, and more pleasant. And it's all about, you know, a Star Trek future and a Star Trek reality. Uh, but what they don't spend enough time doing is really talking about the other side of technology. The fact that technology is going to replace jobs. The fact that technology requires workers to have more training and a different kind of training. Uh, so one of the first pieces of advice I would give it is you need to be more even-handed in how you discuss technology, more transparent with your employees about what a new technological innovation is going to mean, what a transition is going to mean for them, how are you going to take care of them and protect them in the context of these changes. You just really need to address the fears and concerns rather than thinking that by painting this great and glamorous and wonderful picture, people are going to become so enthusiastic that they're going to leave their concerns behind. So that, that's absolutely uh, one important piece of information uh, or an important piece of advice. You know, and another thing is to, um, is to make your employees part of the process. So one of the things we're talking about this year is that one of the most trusted relationships we measure is the relationship between the employer and the employee. It's a more trusting relationship than people have with government, than with media, than with business in general, than with NGOs. It's a critically important relationship. Uh, and that relationship is nurtured by three things. It's nurtured by one, speaking to what I referred to earlier, sort of that giving people a sense of job security, making them feel like their future, their financial future and security is in a safe pair of hands. Now that doesn't mean you guarantee them a job for life, but it does make them feel comfortable that in through inevitable transitions, they're going to look out for you. They're gonna do everything they possibly can to make your transition, if you have to make one, as seamless and as secure as possible, and that they're doing everything they can to retrain rather than replace. So that's one. Two is uh, they wanna feel empowered. They wanna feel like they're part of the organization that they have input into decisions, that they're being listened to, that they're not just a worker bee, but they're a key part of the organization itself. They have a certain level of empowerment and of participation. And then the third thing you need to do is allow them to sort of express their values 
through the work that you and your organization does. Allow them to affect the positive changes they want to see in society that they haven't been able to get through government through you. And so as a tech company, if you uh, empower your employees and you not only empower them within the workplace, but also become sort of a conduit for their values, become an instrument that they can partner with and use to, to affect some of these changes, to allay some of their concerns, that's also going to put you in very good uh, stead with your employers, employees. Thank you so much, Dr. David Bursoff, Head of Global Thought Leadership Research at Edelman Intelligence. If somebody wants to connect with you, maybe they wanna find out more about your work or your research, how can they do that? So there's two ways. If you want some general information about the research in Edelman, I suggest you just go to edelman.com. If you have a specific question for me or some follow-up about the research, you can reach out to me directly at david.bursoff, B-E-R-S-O-F-F, at Edelman Intelligence, all one word, dot com. All right. And if you guys want to find more of my interviews, you can do that right here on ZDNet or Tech Republic, or go to my website, tanyahall.net. I've got links to all my social sites. Thanks for watching.